Let's find our seat on our blanket. And if you need to move the flesh out of the way, drop nice and tall and lift your shoulders up. Lift them up to your ears. Lengthen through that spine, engage the core, holding those shoulders up. And then roll them back, draw the shoulder blades together, roll those shoulders back and then bring them down. Let's do that again, nice deep breath in, roll them up. Let the air out as you bring them back. Inhale, roll them down. Inhale them up. Well, that's a long inhale. Exhale them back and down. <laughs> Inhaling them up. And back and down with the exhale. So we've created this really beautiful circle as we begin to feel ourselves drop into our body. Close your eyes and just see what that feels like from the inside. Noticing what is moving freely, what might be a little bit stuck. No judgment, just noticing. One more time, inhaling up and exhaling back and down. And we're going to pause on the down, exhale, and then we're going to reverse it back. Shoulder blades together. Long inhaling up, exhaling, rolling them together. Sometimes it's nice to bring the arms in and let them kind of roll with it. Big shoulder circles. Last one, inhaling it up, forward, and exhaling it down. Hands come onto your knees, lifting that right shoulder up. So we're still going long in the crown, and we've done nothing as far as twisting. We're just really opening that shoulder girdle, opening the shoulder blades, giving the, the muscles around the shoulders the opportunity to know that they're going to be having a little bit of opening today, maybe a little bit of strengthening. We'll see what shows up. So we're inhaling up the left side, exhaling it down. Inhaling up the right side, exhaling it down. Inhaling up the left side, exhaling it down. So we've got a couple more of these to go. And one more, both shoulders straight up to the ears. Nice long inhale. And exhaling, lowering them down and feeling yourself sink into the earth. Notice what's happening with your legs. So it's nice to have your hands on your knees. They can be face up, face down, whatever feels comfortable to you this morning. <coughs> and we're going to drop in and find our breath. So let's start with just normal breathing. What does your normal breath feel like? Is it shallow? Is it deep? Does the air pass deeper than just the top of your lungs? So what does that mean? Does your belly expand when you inhale? Or are we busy holding it in? When I was small, I was taught to stand up and hold in my stomach. But it's really important to let that belly move with the breath. So inhale, let that belly expand out. Exhale, feel that belly draw in. So the belly button comes into the spine. Inhale, 
belly button goes out. Exhale, belly button comes in. So the interesting thing about this phenomenon is that you can still engage your pelvic floor. So that pelvic floor is the muscle we do kegels with. Inhaling, and if you've never done a kegel, it's the muscle you use when you're done going to the bathroom to cut off the stream of urine. So it's that muscle, that sensation of cutting off. And so just gently draw up through that pelvic floor. Continue with the breath, letting your belly come out. Feeling the belly come in. And then begin to deepen it, slowing it down letting that belly really expand out. And really feeling the lungs expand wide as the air fills in. And as you exhale, feel those lungs begin to contract. Almost as if somebody's coming up behind you and putting their hands around your rib cage, encouraging them to come in. Inviting ujjayi breath in, that's the ocean sound. So imagining you're at the beach, enjoying this beautiful time of coming within and just feeling what's happening on the inner terrain. So the curious thing about uh, when we get stressed out or there's tension in our life, we have a tendency to feel it between our shoulder blades and down our back. But if we bring the air into the body, expanding the belly on the inhale, and exhaling, contracting everything, it brings the breath to all those muscles. And our breath is our life force. The life <clears throat> force, drawing that air in. It helps move us out of the stuckness. So if you're in a situation where you're not sure what to do, keep breathing. We're going to do three more rounds of Ujjayi breath. And this is the last round. So as you exhale, you can continue with the ujjayi breath, but we're going to pick our strap up. And if you have a regular yoga strap, you might want to fold it in half. If you have a long belt, you might want to fold that in half. A, tie, a man's tie works also. Whatever you have handy. So bringing this in front of you, bringing your hands to shoulder width apart. We're going to work at this point with our hand, our arms shoulder width apart. So you can really get a good sense of that with your arms extended in front of you. So it's really important that you're not torquing your wrist. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that your wrists are straight so that you have nice long arms, flat wrists along with your arms. And then let that just come down so you can get a sense of what that feels like. You might have to adjust around especially women, you might have to adjust your arms around your breast every now and then. That's okay. Micro movements create the ability for flexibility in the body. So engage that core, drop nice and tall, bring that straight up overhead. Just come to the point where you're overhead and then take it a little bit further back on the exhale. Opening so many things, engaging, the posterior deltoid, that's the back of the shoulder. 
Find your breath. Inhaling, coming back up right over your head. Exhaling without moving the body, moving the arms only. Bring that to the right. No bending in the elbow, keeping the arms straight. When you begin to feel this, you're going to feel it right through this part of your arm. And if it's not super noticeable, that's okay. It's still opening. There is a lot of um, tension and holding that happens here, especially if you do any kind of work where your arms are in front of you. Planting your garden, working on the computer, uh, doing massage, anything. We work with our arms in front of us most of the day. Inhaling the hands back up overhead, exhaling the other direction. So as you exhale, make sure you continue to breathe. This is not a point of holding your breath. Close your eyes and take a minute to notice down into your pelvic girdle, into that pelvic floor. Are you still holding up? Are your shoulder blades drawing up? What would it feel like to draw those down your back? And notice in that pelvic bowl, what's happening? As we release our shoulders, an interesting phenomenon in our lower body begins to happen. Inhaling, coming back up, taking them straight back, for three breaths, you can do it. Still going long in the crown, staying upright. Make sure you're not leaning back. Only the arms are going back. And exhaling, lowering them down. Notice the difference. So rhomboids engage. Those are the muscles between the shoulder blades. Maybe circle them out a little bit. Circle them forward a little bit. And who knew such a teeny little motion could wake up such a broad part of the body. So inhaling the hands straight back up, we're gonna come right at chest level here. They're straight out in front of you. We're gonna engage that core. We're first gonna draw the arm to the right. So that right arm is gonna bend and you're gonna continue the left arm over, drawing it in front of you. Gently inviting that posterior deltoid into the party, opening up the rhomboids, noticing the muscles in your neck that maybe begin to want to play. My love to lift my shoulder up. They think they're being helpful. So draw down. That actually engages your lat muscles, the muscles in your back. Inhaling, drawing it back forward. Exhaling. Drawing it across the body. We're still not twisting, still about the shoulders. Dropping out of that left um, elbow, keeping the right arm straight, dropping out of that shoulder. Your hand is flat of the left hand. So those little teeny micro movements really make a difference. You can feel it deep in the rotation of the shoulder. See how my shoulder comes to, wants to roll up? Roll it down. Good. Inhaling back to center. Exhaling, taking it down, giving yourself a little shake. Shake it out. Dogs, if you ever watch your pets, dogs, cats, anything, even fish do it, when they've had something stressful happen, they shake it out, they shake it off. Good. Inhaling those hands back to center. This time we're going to invite the, the spine into this. So we're going to inhale and we're going to pull the body all the way to the right. Now, arms are going to stay up. So go as deep into this as you can. If you find that you want to kind of go into your right hip, bring it back down, level off into that left hip, even weight into those hip, sit bones. Breathing into it, find your breath. Notice how the, the low spine begins to open on the exhale. If you want to deepen this, you can look over that left shoulder with your neck. On the next inhale, we're gonna exhale coming back to center. Re-engage that pelvic floor and exhale the other direction. Your shoulders might be talking to you. They might be wanting to creep up to your ears. Bring them down. Invite the lats to help you out. 
pull those shoulders down, down your back. Lift up through your pelvic floor, find your breath, keep breathing. Inhaling, coming back to center, lowering those hands down. So let's take a second and lengthen out those legs and just give a little bit of shake in the knees, shake them out, wiggle it around a little bit. And then when you cross your feet back, tuck the opposite foot in. This feels funny, feels super funny in my body because I always tuck my right foot. So in order for me to tuck my left foot, I have to really think about it. So whichever foot you tuck on the inside first, do the opposite. And if it feels comfortable, switch it and see if it still feels comfortable because sometimes we inadvertently go back to our normal ways. So this is all part about changing patterns in our life also. So taking our strap, bringing it behind us, hands are still flat along the arms, but palms are facing up, shoulder width apart. Feel that heart open. Let this be about your knuckles working to reach the floor. So you'll feel this across your chest. The pec major and pec minor are there. All the serratus muscles of the, of the, between the ribs. We have lots of little teeny muscles between each rib. Inhaling, we're gonna lift those arms up. Doesn't matter how high you go, what matters is that you keep your wrist straight and that you're not diving forward, that you're still growing long and tall, feeling your head come back over your shoulders, tucking the chin just a teeny, feeling that crown grow long. And on the next inhale, inhale, grow tall and hinge at the hips. You might go two inches, you might go all the way to the floor and see if those arms will lift a little bit higher. Just notice. You might begin to feel the heat building. One more breath, coming back down. Don't let go of those arms, keep them strong, keep them up, coming back tall. Bring your hands to the right, opening that left shoulder. This opens the anterior deltoid of the left shoulder. And can you see the beautiful demonstration I'm demonstrating of my shoulder lifting on my left side, lower it down. I love when my body gives examples, whether I want it to or not. Inhaling, coming back to center, exhaling the other way, just the arms, no twisting in the body yet. We're gonna do that next. If you feel that heat building, inhale through your nose and exhale through your mouth like you're blowing out a candle. That's a cooling breath. Excellent, inhaling, exhaling, hands back to center. Give yourself a little break here, just soften in through the shoulders, maybe circle them around, shake it out a little. And then lengthen through those arms again, reaching for the floor. Inhaling your hands up and this time twisting, twisting to the left. Look over your left shoulder, over your left leg rather. Head can be forward. If you want to deepen it, you can look over your left shoulder. This is also inviting the um, ascending colon into the party. Good move for in the morning. Open up our elimination system, letting go of things we no longer need. Inhaling, coming back to center, bring your nose with you. Exhaling, looking over the other leg, the right leg. I might have actually just told you that backwards because if you guys are all twisting over the right, that's ascending colon. Your ascending colon's over your right one. So we're gonna go to the left again because we want to invite the ascending colon in first. And then we're gonna twist all the way to the other side, to the left side, inviting the descending colon in. And then back to center and exhaling. Now the body's no longer confused. Let go of that strap, shake out your arms. Sometimes when we hang on for dear life, our forearms get a great workout. Shake them out, shake them like you're gonna wave at somebody, shake them side to side. Excellent. We're gonna Step off of our 
blanket and onto our mat, coming into tabletop. And we're gonna just have our knees hip distance apart. Reach your hands out to the front of the mat right here, pressing into your palms and your fingertips. And we're gonna stretch all the way down into puppy pose right here. Let your forehead touch the mat. Let your heart drop down. Feel the opening across the back body. Breathing into it. On the next inhale, we're gonna rise up, coming right on into tabletop. We're gonna do a little bit of balance here this morning from tabletop. So let's find our first uh, posture, which is tabletop. Hands are nice and wide. So if you think you've got your fingers spread as wide as they'll go, just give them a little more space in between because they can always open a little bit more. Feel the eyes of the elbows spin forward and notice how you feel that in your shoulders. Drop your head down and roll those shoulders back and then lengthen through your crown. So we're building this from the ground up. So feel your hands really pressing forward. Now lengthen through your head. So we've got the front body done. Let's go to the base body. So knees are directly underneath your hip points, your ASIS. You've heard me um, talk about the, the front part of your pelvis, the little pokey part that sticks out, an attachment point for many important muscles. Feel that tailbone. Do just a little teeny bit of pelvic tilt. See if you can feel how that belly button engages, how your pelvic floor engages. And as if I'm coming around, imagine that I'm touching your waist and inviting you to just slide that tailbone down a little bit and take out the drop in the spine so that your back is nice and flat. And if you're looking up, you are looking to the future. Let's come right into the present and let your nose go right straight down as if you could drop a string off the end of your nose and it would hang straight down. Breathe into this. This right here is a strong table. Find your breath. Have three breaths. <sighs> so from this strong table, feel your weight begin to pour into your left knee, but keep the pelvis straight and lengthen through that right leg. Now this might be your posture here, but if you have the space, lengthen through that left arm. Feel the opening. Breathe into it. Find your breath. Three more. I'm gonna be quiet doing your three breaths. Exhaling that left hand down underneath your shoulder right knee is down. Balance out your tabletop again. If your wrists are sore from this nice strong tabletop, give it some space. It's okay to open up. Take a break. You need to go to another puppy pose. Do that. Double check. Make sure those eyes of your elbows are spinning forward. We're engaging different muscles of the shoulder today and lengthen through that left leg. Ooh, maybe. There it went. And lengthen through that right arm. Engaging that pelvic floor, feeling those hips square off. These are little teeny micro movements that help us maintain our balance as we move through life. Three more breaths. Exhaling that hand down, exhaling that knee down. Walk those hands to the front of the mat and sink back into puppy. What does your puppy look like? It doesn't matter. Just imagine those arms underneath the arms and the axillary, that's the armpit. All of those muscles are opening, creating space. Feel those shoulder blades kind of draw forward and open between the rhomboids. Take a nice deep breath in and feel the ribs expand and create space between each individual rib. 
beautiful. Inhaling, rising up. Hands back on the floor in front of you. Draw that left foot forward. We're coming into low lunge today. So this is the only posture where I'm okay if the knee passes the ankle because your even distributed weight between your lower back leg, which is the right leg, and your front leg. If you have blocks, you can use them here. And if you don't, that's okay. Inhale, bring the right hand next to the left foot, and exhale, draw that left arm up and open into a twist. Sinking forward. Finding your breath. Three more, you can do it. Sometimes holding posture creates a deep strength in the mind. Inhale through those fingertips, exhale, bring them down. Draw that foot back down behind you. Find your tabletop again. Find your perfect strong tabletop, eyes of the elbow spinning forward. Take a quick inventory, close your eyes, take a nice deep breath in. Feel the left side compared to the right side. How does it differ? Inhale into the right knee and exhale through the left knee, bringing it straight behind you and lengthening through the right arm. Find the balance. How does it feel different? Just notice, how does it feel different in your torso? Exhaling that hand down, exhaling that left knee down, pouring into the left knee, lengthening through the right knee, lengthening through the left arm. How about this side? Is this a stronger balance pose for you? Does it feel different? Inhale, exhale the hand down, exhale that knee down, reach the hands forward, sink back into puppy pose. Lengthening through those arms. Stretching that forehead to the mat. Feel the opening happening in that upper body. Inhaling, find back up, find your tabletop again. Bring that right foot forward. Be mindful of any knees. So if you're on a hardwood floor on your mat, if you want to put a, you know, just a, a little bit of blanket underneath your knee, you can do that just so that it's not out on the knee. Sinking forward, taking a minute to find where this feels like it's supportive to you, bringing that left hand next to the right foot and inhaling open. I apologize for the back but breathe into it, spin into it. Find your breath. If your mind is talking to you, invite it to the other room and focus on your breath. Three more breaths, you can do it. Inhaling through those fingertips, exhaling, coming down, stepping back out of it, coming back into tabletop. Find that strong tabletop, build it up from the ground up. Hands, eyes of the elbow, lengthening through the crown, finding the strength in the torso as if you have somebody around you like sliding down in the tailbone. Lengthening through the left leg this time. Nope, right leg, sorry, right leg this time, left arm. Find your balance. Exhaling the hand down, exhaling the knee down, pouring into the right knee, exhaling into that left knee, it, inhaling into the right arm, find your breath, three breaths. Exhaling the hand down, exhaling the knee down, 
One more little puppy pose, hands come far out. Sinking back into puppy pose. Mm -hmm. Checking in. Now, if you wanna take this puppy pose to child's pose and take a little break, you're welcome to do that. And if you're ready, we're gonna move on. Inhaling back into tabletop. Curling the toes under, and we're going to walk our hands back and roll ourselves up into standing forward fold right here. Mm -hmm. And we're going to just be here in forward fold for just a second, kind of inviting our feet into standing solid on the earth. Take note if your feet are hip distance apart, pick your toes up, see yourself, feel yourself drop into the four points of the feet, and then one at a time, set your toes down. And if one at a time doesn't happen, you can pretend like it does. Little toe, fourth toe, middle toe, first, second toe, first toe. Inhaling, rolling up, bringing your hands up all the way overhead, feeling those arms as they open into tall mountain, drop out of your shoulders. Nice deep breath in. Feel that core engage as you drop out of your tail. Let go of anything you don't need to hold this posture. So there's a nice long line of energy happening right through the arch of the foot, all the way up your legs, through your spine, and out the crown of your head. It also travels up your arms holding you. So this is an effortless posture. If you find some effortfulness, Bring your breath in. Notice where you're holding that you no longer need to hold. Turn your hands so that palms are facing away and exhale them away from each other slowly, almost as if you're moving through mud with your arms. The atmosphere is thick. We're moving it out of the way. And as you reach a T position, pause. Notice how the line of energy from the palms of your hand connects into the earth, almost as if you're resting your palms on top of a pole. Breathing into it. Continuing the journey down, exhaling down. Let those shoulders really fall away. Fall away from your ears. Beautiful. And as your hands come down beside you, spin the palms open as if you're in actual, well, you are in actual standing mountain pose. Tadasan. Great. Open your eyes. Begin to just shake it out. Shake it out everywhere. Shake it out. Sometimes when we hold posture, tension builds in the body, and we want to remind the body it's okay to let go of that tension, even though it's useful. Finding your strap again. So if you threw it far away, go on a journey and find it. We're going to turn the long way on your mat, and we're going to just step our feet uh, a little bit wider than hip distance, quite a little bit wider than hip distance, okay? So, hand is gonna, hands are gonna be in front of us to start with. So, in this posture, we can open them up a little bit wider. So, there's still shoulder distance, but maybe just a little bit wider than shoulder distance. We're gonna inhale the hands up, and then up, and then we're gonna exhale, and not only the arms, but we're going to go into a lateral move here. So you can't go super deep. You don't want to hinge in the hips. You want to still be strong in that core. And feel this. You'll feel it from the top of your hip, up the side body, up the outside edge of the arm, and then soften your fingers a little bit. If you're hanging on to that strap for dear your life, what would it feel like to maybe give the fingers a little bit of space? Breathe into it. Inhaling, coming back to center. Exhaling the other direction. 
breathing into it. <laughs> I think we have barking spiders in our face. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Always a joy, Carrie. You're always a joy. Inhaling back up. I'm going to have everybody spin their, which direction I'm going to go. I'm going to go left foot first. So spin your left foot open. So we're heading into kind of a pseudo triangle. So you're going to hinge your hip first and then you're going to exhale those arms and you're not going to tip all the way because this is going to cause the side body to actually have to work. So feel, feel that belly button come in, draw it in, keep breathing, three breaths. Inhaling back up, turning that foot forward. Can we got one more side in us? We can do it. Spin that right foot, hinge at the hips, and exhale down. Woo! Keep building now. Breathing into it. Inhaling, coming back to center, spinning up, dropping those arms down. Bringing that behind us, opening those front shoulders. So same thing here. Palms facing away from our, our backside. Lengthening straight down. Inhale, engage that core. Inhale, lifting those arms up. And this time we're going to dive forward, but leading with a flat back. And as you come all the way forward, let those hands drop up over your head. Now, for some people that are super open in the shoulders, their hands will come all the way up and over. That's just a vision for me. Inhaling, exhaling, lifting through the tail. Lift it up, feel those legs strengthen long. Breathing into it. Nowhere to go. Nothing to do except hang out. Great inhaling, lifting straight up. Beautiful. Release that strap, release those arms, shake it out. Walk those feet in. Right here. So coming back to mountain pose. I think we have time for one more arm. Maybe a little, a, a little teeny balance is with you today. So we're going to inhale those hands up to a T position. So I have to think about this because I got to think about which side we view first. We're going to cross the bottom hand, the right hand, right arm underneath the left arm. So left arm's on top, and then we're going to circle them around and hook right in here. Okay. So your bottom arm, theoretically, is your right arm, okay? So we're going to engage our core, and we're going to just do a little bit of a twist to the left. You're going to be off the opposite of me. And then inhale back to the and exhale to the right and hold it. You're going to feel this in the back of that right arm. Little bit of twist happening in the spine. Feet are forward, hip points are forward. Inhaling, coming back to center. We're gonna sink down into the knees, just soften them, okay? We're gonna pour into the right leg. I'm going to be opposite of you, lifting off your toe. Now, this might be your posture right here. You have to kind of find a point to look at around your arms and if you have the space, you can lift that foot up. And if you have the space, you can cross your leg and hook your foot behind your leg. I'm level two today, but I like to kind of talk through each level, but honor where you are. Level one is right here with your toe helping you. you might actually be level one today. Inhaling, stepping back down. Exhaling, lift those shoulders up, lift the elbows up. Lift them down and then release the hands, unwinding, opening them up into a T position. Now, left hand comes on the bottom, spinning it around. Just notice how this side might be tighter. You may not be able to hook your hands, and you might have to do back of your palms together if you can't loop them all the way around. Okay? 
Take a nice deep inhale. Uh, twist to the right first. We're opposite of each other, remember. Inhaling back to center. Exhaling, twisting to the left. So we're gonna catch the back of that left shoulder. Deltoid, bring them down. Bring those shoulders down. If you want to counter pose it, bring down the shoulders, lift up the elbows. Little tiny might play with this a little bit. See where you can really feel the opening happen. Inhaling, coming back to center. Exhaling, just soften the knees, pouring into that left foot. Find a point to look at that's not moving. So, you know, maybe don't look at the screen. Look at a point on your floor. Level one is here. Level two is here. Level three is hooking that foot around. Not happening in this body today. I'm honoring that. Honor where your body is, always. Exhaling that foot down. Inhaling, lifting the arms up. Exhaling, lowering them down. Release them out wide and shake them out. Shake out the hips, do some circles. Notice where you feel it in your body. Twists twist and shoulders are such an interesting thing for me because as you know, I fell a few years ago and dislocated my elbow and I'm still opening those muscles up. So much stronger and so much more open than it was even a year ago, it's amazing. Inhaling those hands up into a T position. We're gonna give ourselves a big hug with the right arm underneath. Right arm underneath, big hug. See if you can reach your shoulder blades, then lift up through those elbows. And then on the next long inhale, grow tall, and then exhale, leading forward with your elbows. Now, I don't care whether your knees are bent or straight, it doesn't matter. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna exhale and we're gonna twist to the left, we're opposite. Inhaling back to center, exhaling flat back up. Opening those arms wide. Switching side, left hand on the bottom, right hand on the top. Lifting up the elbows. Going long in the crown, engaging that core, that core. Diving forward, leading with the elbows. Doesn't matter how deep you go. Just matters that you go forward. Exhaling, twisting to the right. So it's almost like your right hand is pulling that left shoulder blade open. And we're getting a little twist also. Inhaling, coming back to center. Exhaling, drawing up. Shaking it out. <laughs> Good morning, shake it out, excellent. So we're gonna do some um, back bends. Well, little back bends, no big deal. Coming back to the back side of your mat, we're gonna inhale, nice long inhale all the way up. And we're gonna exhale, swan dive forward. And as you come down, let your hands connect with the mat and then walk your hands forward movement of the arms into downward facing dog just pass through dog all the way down to the floor onto your belly so lengthen through the left foot lengthen through the right foot okay make sure those feet are hip distance apart your hands are directly underneath your shoulders Engaging the core, feeling that pubic bone, press down into the floor, roll those shoulders down your back, lengthen through the crown, inhale, come up to whatever your cobra is. So we're gonna do a little cobra to start with, just to invite the back muscles into this. Feel those feet pressing into the floor, breathing into it, exhaling, lowering down. Just let your forehead touch your mat, Inhaling and pressing up a little bit deeper here. Elbows are in. Shoulders are down. 
Two more breaths. Exhaling, lowering down. Beautiful. Inhaling. Lifting up and do your full expression of cobra. So if your full expression of cobra is right here, honor that and do all the little micro movements of the elbows down, the shoulders down, lengthening through the crown, engaging the core. And if it's a little bit higher up, do that. And if you're a super stretchy person, you can come here and let it be here. But don't go to the deepest point if you're feeling it in your low back, honor that. Engage your core. Pelvic floor is engaged. Working your pubic bone towards the floor. Finding your breath. Two more breaths. Exhaling, lowering down slowly. Super slow. And then from here, we're gonna press back into child's pose because I wanna make sure that you really, really open that low back the opposite way, keep your knees together and fold over your knees. Now mine kinda of looks like puppy because I'm still healing my knee. If you have the space to sit clear back on your knees, <coughs> do that. I'm getting closer, breathing into it. Maybe, Walk your arms down beside your feet and let your head just rest on the mat. And if that's not comfortable, you can move your hands forward or even stack your hands and let your forehead rest on them. Find your breath. Let it go. Beautiful work. Inhaling, pressing yourself up and finding your way onto your bottom. Just sitting down. Feet out in front of you. I like to be on my mat for this. Check in, find your sit bones. Grow up nice and tall, inhaling the hands up, exhaling, diving forward. Now, I'm not using the strap today because this is just going to be a little counter pose to those deep cobras. Cobras sometimes are a friend and cobras sometimes really challenges us. Drop out of your shoulders, lengthen through your crown, lead with your heart. Beautiful. Inhaling, coming up, drawing that left knee in, foot to standing, grow up nice and tall, and then begin, begin to twist around it. And I always encourage my torso to come with me and then you can hook your arm around your leg. If you're super stretchy and you want to go on the outside of your leg, you can. I'm not that stretchy. Turning your hand all the way around. Now, no leaning back. Walk that in close to you, the palm of the hand close, and encourage your spine long and tall. Grow up through your crown. Engage your core. Twist into it. Breathe. All these little micro things. Inhaling, turning your head back, then your shoulders, releasing the hands and coming all the way forward, dropping that left knee open. So we have our right foot flexed and the leg extended. Sometimes this alone is the posture. If you're pressing through your heel, it's actually you're gonna feel it all the way up the back of your leg to your sit bones. Make sure you're growing long and tall in your crown right here, inhaling the hands up and exhaling forward. Sometimes when you only have one leg involved, you can go deeper and sometimes not. This is an interesting way to really notice the different sides of the body. You know, just notice the hamstring of the right leg. Notice if your left knee is dropping down. Are you holding it up? What would it feel like to just soften through all of these adductors on the inside of your left thigh, engaging that right foot. Just notice. Great, inhaling up, 
exhaling the hands down, releasing that left leg back long. We're going to do another Dandasan, forward fold, exhaling, folding forward. Mm. Does the right leg feel different than the left leg? Inquiry. Noticing. One more breath. On the inhale, drawing up, bringing that right knee with you. Again, if you want to encourage the torso around with you, and then bring your arm, your left arm around, hooking it on your knee or putting it on the opposite side of your knee. Elbow opposite side of the knee works too. If you're super stretchy, that's a great way to do it. Bring that hand behind you, drop out of your shoulder, twist and look. Find your breath. Inhaling, turning that nose back forward, releasing the shoulders, releasing the twist, dropping that knee open. Figure four. Inhaling the hands up, exhaling, diving forward. Notice, how is this leg? Is it more stretchy than the other leg? Sometimes when you have one leg uh, easier to fly forward with, there might be a little imbalance in the pelvis. That's okay, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just a nice notation of how we lead through life. Well, I have more restriction on my right leg, which tells me I'm always leading with my linear side. I'm going to allow myself to use my creative side, which is my left side. Balance that out. Beautiful, inhaling up. Exhaling the hands down, lengthening through that right leg. One more dandasana. Exhaling into forward fold. Notice, can you reach your toes? Are you further down your leg? Tip your chin forward, lead with your heart, but lengthen through the back of your neck. Find your breath. Beautiful, inhaling hands up, rising up, exhaling your hands down. Coming into true Dandasana. So placing your hands behind you, palms facing, or fingertips facing your bottom and stretch back into those arms, setting those heels of your hands down. And it's less about leaning on your arms and more about working through your arms. Take a nice deep breath in and have a little inquiry here. How does my body feel? What more do I need today? Do I need one more twist? Does my body desire a bridge? It doesn't need one, but if it desires one, Honor that. Really listen what the body needs. Move into wherever it wants to go. So you can head into meditation and motion from here. You do not have to stay here. But if this feels yummy and delicious, stay here. We're going to be here for three or four more breaths. And out of this, release those arms. Give any final movement that you need before you find your way into Shavasana. So Shavasana for many looks like lying on your back. For some, it's in standing. For others, it's legs lengthened out. 
And for some, Shavasana is coming to seated pose and just sitting in easy pose. Not many. I find that when I drop into Shavasana, I love to drop into Mother Earth and let her truly hold me. So feel those feet just soften. And the core can let go. And maybe entertain the idea of taking one more long deep breath in through the nose, filling the entire lung cavity and letting it out with a nice long sigh. Ah. And as you do that, feeling your shoulders soften to the floor as the eyes grow heavy. <clears throat> And that mind goes to that space of not here and not there. Dear God, Spirit, Divine Mother, on this day, I ask you to grant this request. May I know who I am and what I am every moment of every day. May I be a catalyst for light and love and bring inspiration to those whose eyes I meet. May I have the strength to stand tall in the face of conflict and the courage to speak my voice even when I'm scared. May I have the humility to follow my heart and the passion to live my soul's desires. May I seek to know the highest truth and dismiss the gravitational pull of my lower self. May I embrace and love the totality of my life and myself, my darkness as well as my light. May I be brave enough to hear my heart, to let it soften so that I may gracefully choose faith over fear. Today is my day to surrender anything that stands between the sacredness of my humanity and my divinity. May I be drenched in my holiness and engulfed in your light. May all else melt away. And so it is. This was by Debbie Ford. So you might consider the idea of staying in Shavasana. But for those of you who are ready, you can move over your fingers and toes. And gently come back to now, roll into your side. When you're ready, hands to the heart. Namaste. Namaste.